right, Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who taught me this truth, and double citations to all you Akim out there laboring, the house of David, the elect, that's pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers, and shalom to the elect. I'm back with another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash. And the scriptures say that Israel have played the harlot. And when I saw this video, I thought about the scripture in Hosea, the fourth chapter, where it says Ephraim is joined unto idols. Let them alone. OK, because idol worship or idolatry has always been the Achilles heel, so to speak. You know, the, the downfall, the destruction for our people, you know, the Israelites, you so-called Negroes. Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics, you know. And uh, in this lesson, I wanted to focus on the Northern Kingdom, which represents the, the so-called Latinos, Native Americans, Hispanics, all right? The Latin tribes, if you will, you know. Just to show you that these are the people, these are the Israelites, you know. But real quick, this is the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha. <clears throat> this is Baruch. Chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Verse 6, Baruch 4 and 6, it says, You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved Yahweh Shai to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. And this is why we were delivered into slavery. This is why we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. All right. This is why we were uprooted out of the land. Of Israel okay verse 7 it says for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high and it's the same thing that we see unto this very day you know Jake giving you know credence unto idols you know worshiping and and crying over these idols you know and it's the same thing that uh got us destroyed before and it's the same thing that's happening to this very day, you know. It says, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. It says, you have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up. And you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you, right? So, you know, I just thought it was spiritual, you know, that, you know, the same things that we did before, did before is the same thing, the same things that we're doing today, you know. But getting into that scripture... In Hosea, the fourth chapter. All right. This is Hosea 4 and 16. It says, For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord, Yehovah Shemuel Shai, will feed them as a lamb in a large place. It says, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let them alone. You see that? So Ephraim, once again, is joined unto idols. Let them alone. You know? Just proving in this lesson that that these are the people of the Lord. These are the Israelites, you know, proven through the scriptures and, and also the, you know, the curses that are written. All right. We are the people of the book, basically. Right. So looking at some commentary here from Hosea, chapter four, verse 17, jumping down. This is from the pulpit commentary. Verse 17, it says Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone, Ephraim being the dominant tribe, gave his name the Northern Kingdom, all right? Because Ephraim would, would, uh, would be the head of the Northern Kingdom, all right? It says, the idols were Ephraim's folly, right? As we see in this video. You know, how spiritual is that? It says, it says the idols, the idols were Ephraim's folly, and to that they were wedded. And in consequence, they are left to their folly and at the same time surrendered to their fate. It says they may persist in their folly. They cannot be prevented. All right. Because you think about it, man, these these especially these Latin so-called Latin tribes, they're hardcore into this uh, into this idol worship, you know, just as uh, uh, Judah is as well, you know. But it says. It says that they may persist in their folly. They cannot be prevented. Give him rest 
as the words literally mean, from exhortations and ex and ex, ex how you say that word expostulations, expostulations from re remonstrances and reproofs. He will persist in his folly, prepare for his fate, and perish by his sin. And, and a lot of these um, northern kingdom tribes, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much hell bent on, on their idols. All right. They're not going to come out of that, you know, especially when it comes to, um, you know, so-called uh, uh, Jesus Christ and Virgin Mary and also Santa, Santa Merte, you know, Ephraim is hardcore into these, um, into these uh, uh, idols, man. All right. It says, <clears throat> reading on here, it says, this abandonment of Ephraim proves the desperate nature of his case. Left to his own recklessness, he is rushing towards ruin. Judah is warned to stand aloof from the contagion, lest by interference he might be implicated in the sin and involved in the punishment of Ephraim. It says, the Hebrew commentators express the word rendered joined to in the authorized version, verse 17, by words of importing yoke to, allied with, and cleaving to, all right? Because Ephraim is, is, is allied, he's yoked, he's cleaved to these idols. It says, it says, is explained by them as follows, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's the point, man. So I thought that was pretty heavy there, man. You know, just showing you that once again that these these are the people of the Lord, man. You know, giving on giving unto idols, giving unto idolatry, man. And it was just saying, and, and, and that was the reason why they were uh pretty much um you know exported out of the land, if you will, man. You know, going back to the time of Second Kings, the seventeenth chapter. Let's read that real quick. You know, <clears throat> this is Second Kings. All right, because this is this is what caused. The northern kingdom Israel to be rooted out of the land. All right, so this is Second Kings 17, and we'll start at um, we'll start at the top first verse here. Second Kings 17 verse one, and it reads: It says, "In the twelfth year of of Ahaz king of Judah began Hosea the son of, of Eli to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years." Verse two, and it says, "And he and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord Yahweh Shimei was shy." But not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Again, Asalakia, against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and this was um, Sh uh, Shalmaneser the fifth. All right. When you go into the history, it says again, against him came up Sh Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea. In Hosea for he had sent messengers to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Verse five, it says, then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. You see that? So he conquered the, uh, the northern kingdom here. All right. It says, verse six, Israel captive. All right. It says in the ninth year, Hosea the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. See, we went, uh, the northern kingdom went into uh, Assyrian captivity and placed them in Hala and Habar by the river of Gozan and in the city of the Medes. And it says, why Israel fell? Verse 7, it says, 2 Kings 17 and 7, it says, for, for so it was the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, Yehovah Shemel Shah, their power, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, see, and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Lord, Yahweh Shemah cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which he had made, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord, Yahweh Shemah their power, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set and they set them up images in groves in every high hill and under every green tree. 
And there they burnt incense in all the high places. And as it says, as did the heathen, whom the Lord, Yehovah Shemashai, carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the, the Lord, Yehovah Shemashai, to anger. To anger. And it's the same thing they did back then. And it's the same thing that they continue to do now. Right. So I was just thinking about, you know, the parallels between now and then and what happened to, to them now. I mean, to them uh, back then and what's going on now. Still giving on to those idols. Right. They did uh, as we read and they did secretly those things that, that angered the Lord. You know, verse um, verse 12, it says, for they served idols. You see that talking about the northern kingdom, Israel. For they served idols whereof the Lord, Yehovah Shema Washai, has said unto them, ye should not do this thing, right? Same thing today, all right? That same spirit, they serve, serving, uh, uh, serving those idols, you know? It says, <clears throat> verse 13, it says, Yet the Lord, Yehovah Shema Washai, testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes, According to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Right. It says, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks like like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord. Yahweh Shemelah Shah, the power. You see that? And that's spiritual. All right. They were warned by the prophets back then. All right. To turn away from those idols and, and to turn back. To their true power, Yahweh Shema Washah, but it says they hardened their necks. You know, they didn't want to listen. Same thing now. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And, and they followed vanity. See, it became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord, Yahweh Shema Washah, had charged them that they should not do like them. See? And they left all the commandments of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, the power, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve but all. And it's the same thing now, man. All right. They made them images. All right. They they uh, they built those idols. It's the same thing, man. Jake is heavily, you know, engulfed in Catholicism. All right. The worship of Mary. Santa Merte and 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 uh, 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 Cesare Borgia, right? The rosemary beads, you know, uh, 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 pretty much Ephraim, the northern kingdom, is heavy into that uh, idolatry, you know. It says, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord Yahweh Shemelashai. To, pro to provoke Salakia, to provoke him to anger. Therefore, the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And, and Judah fell as well because they were conquered by the Babylonians, you know. But the point is that, you know, as the scriptures say, uh, uh, you know, nothing new under the sun, you know. So that same spirit is upon the northern kingdom unto this very day, you know, so. Like I said, I, th I thought it was spiritual just looking at the parallels between now and then, you know. But, hey, I pray that this quick lesson was edifying. You know, I just wanted to bring that out. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and Shalom.